for Schindler. Has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance! Dr. Nose, Fork Face, Talk of the Town, any teenage lads pretending to be an ITK. You lads took one hell of a beating. Yes, welcome to the special episode about the new gaffer at Huddersfield Town. It's not David Wagner, it's uh, Mark Fotheringham. I'm your host, Brady Frost, and to chat about it and to preview the Reading game, I'm joined by James Whitaker and Joe Scott. Joe, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Brady. Good to hear, good to hear. James, you good? Good, thank you. Yeah, very well, thank you. Good, very pleasant and formal from you both there. Mm. Um, You may be asking you two and the listener where the hell is Thomas Bradshaw that's a very good question um but the team news has come in and Tom has pulled out with illness uh, I know you can't get the staff these days but uh, we will soldier on uh, you've got the traditional f- free format so we're all good um right let's get stuck into it then gents so we've got a new boss uh, Mark Fotheringham he's joined on a deal until June 2025 um so like some of the recent town managers he was an assistant coach, 38 years old as well. We, we seem to like him young. Um, that sounds really weird out of context, but I'll carry on. Uh, <laughs> most recently, he guided uh, Hertha Berlin uh, to Bundesliga survival. Uh, he's currently working towards his UEFA Pro license as well, um, as some of the managers in the Premier League. I noticed someone made the point that when Mikel Arteta joined Arsenal, he was also uh, working for, on his license. Uh, Mark also helped uh, FC Ingolstadt uh, gain promotion to the uh, second Bundesliga um, and he's coached in the German second tier and he's also got two years coaching in Scottish football. So it's not David Wagner, uh, I think it's so, you know, I think some of the fans have had uh, a bit of a reaction to that. Um, but James, you, you've, it was announced today, you've had a little bit of time to process the news. W- what are your thoughts on the appointment? Yeah, I think um, it's obviously not Wagner, which is which is a big takeaway from it. But obviously, that was um, that was kind of it got around the fan base, and um, and yeah, that 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 might, to be honest, sort of affect expectations. But and I know that there was a bit of a delay in sort of announcing it the way that he um, he was discussed. He was sort of seen through uh, from KFC, KFC car park, you know, spotted training, but. I quite like the way that he's just gone to training straight away and, and we've got like, we've seen that he's already met met the lads and he's sort of going to be working with them. I was listening to the, the interviews done, really impressed, um, very sort of authoritative and uh, sort of regular listeners on the I really love Danny Schofield, but he didn't really sound too confident and he sound, sounded very sort of process oriented in his um, press conferences, whereas... Um, Matt Fotheringham, I can say his name right, just seemed just seemed really, really up for the challenge and just spoke with a lot of authority and confidence. And I know that's not everything, but he just his C V as well just speaks to someone who's got a real mix mix of perspective in the game and, and great contacts as well. And someone who seemed to by by all accounts have some interest in him in the Bundesliga after that. Famously keeping her for building up. I mean, he should have probably never been in that position, but um, I understand that McGaff had COVID and then it was him who basically led the team out and kept up in like a crucial playoff. So, yeah, I mean, I think I'm warming to the appointment more and more whenever, I'm sure everyone will be the same, that they've heard it's Wagner. It was a lot of excitement, but um, realistically, you know, you, you can't blame the club because someone's tracked Christoph Buller's wife's flight to the UK, you know. So, um, yeah, I think I think it, it fits with the natural style that we've got in terms of picking them Picking assistant to the regional manager, you know, uh, picking picking assistant to like a big name, and hopefully, you know, the idea being that you can bring bring across a philosophy and a playing style and a bit of gravitas without without going out and getting like the biggest names that are obviously going to cost a lot of money. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my view. The nutshell, really. Uh, and that was quite the nutshell, James. Thank you very much, um, Joe. Again, you you saw the interview. What were your first impressions? I know you had the lucky of seeing it through the uh, hole in the wall at KFC, but um, <laughs> you know we've been described on here when we were on the 
Carlos Corbran uh, pod when he'd left we were described as a bunch of wimps. Well, uh, I think if you mark Fotheringham, I don't think he wants wimps because he said he's not here to be the player's friend, he's here to win games. So what yeah. are your kind of first impressions of him? Yeah, I've forgotten about the wimp thing. That was very funny. That was very, very funny. Um, but I think it basically I'd echo what, what James said. Um, wasn't actually overly disappointed when it started to filter through that it wasn't going to be Wagner. Um, uh, but I'd never heard of Mark Fotheringham. Um, but as soon as I listened to his interview, um, I was completely like convinced and sold on him. Like just the way he talks, you really believe that he's going to come in and turn things around and get results. That I was thinking earlier, I can't in my head imagine us with our the team we've got and him in charge, unless he's just a, a com- completely blagging it. I can't see us losing games week in week out with him in charge. I'm pretty confident he's gonna um, he's gonna really turn him around. And if if the players react any anything like me and James, don't know your views yet, but if they're anything like us, they're going to be inspired by him, and they're going to they're going to really go out and want it. Um, and you mentioned a few times about uh, enjoying being on the front foot and attacking football and creativity um, at the top of the pitch. And I think if that comes to fruition, that's something we're all going to really enjoy because, like, we've got some real talent up there, like right? Andrew and Sauber and Rodoni and seen glimpses of. Um, if yeah, if that comes to fruition, then I think that's going to be something we've been looking forward to for quite a while. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very positive. Uh, was unsure until I heard his interview, and then after that, I was completely sold. I think uh, I think he's going to do really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you guys. Um, a shock, we we all agree, but um, I think if Fagner's been linked, um, I could understand why people may be disappointed. You know. Uh, you know, this this criticism, I think for me, you know, this is on paper looks a good appointment, certainly fits with the structure, which I think is is important, you know, if they're going to stick, they've lost Carlos Corberan and Danny Cowley over this, keeping this structure. So I think it's good they've not, um, you know, in some ways, if Wagner did want it, you know, we, we don't, obviously we don't know, but they've kept to the structure. I think that's good. Mm. Um, so it's not relying on, on one man. I, I think I'd be more happy... Again, we can't change what's happened in the past, but I think this um, this appointment would go down a bit better if it was in the summer. Um, I understand the situation that we were we were left in. Um, we, we kind of done that, but I, I will admit, like seeing the um, seeing his interview, I know we all know what interviews are like, but um, and obviously it's, it's, it's club promotion. But I, I was impressed with him. You know, I think um, it's weird we've not actually had a manager like that who's kind of not going to give them um, a paste in, but, you know, seems very confident in what he wants to do and yeah. you know, kind of has, um, I'd say maybe the personality to, to back it up. Um, you know, we don't know. Obviously, we'll talk a little about the Reading game later on, but um, I think, you know, I, th- I, was, I was impressed with his interview. My, my only concern would be, um, and I don't want to be old football man, um, but I do wonder if that personality is a bit more traditional football. And I don't want to be like these players, but obviously it's different times um, and players maybe don't always respond well to a rollicking. But I'd like to think, mm. you know, he's a, he's a young coach. He's, he's, you know, worked with some of the greats and um, we'll have to wait and see. But And again, it's an interview. You don't know what it's like on the training pitch, but I think you both touched on it there. It bodes well that he... He was in training on Tuesday, you know, and yeah. wants to get stuck in. I think that's exactly what we need. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you're saying about maybe our our players might not respond well to that. But I, I, I kind of feel like Carlos could have been really stern when things were going were going badly. Um, maybe in a different way, I feel like fathering him might be more on the side of like launching something across the room uh, just above one of their heads. But I, I, feel like, I feel like that could work with some of them. I think Hoggy will love it. Hoggy will. Uh, <laughs> Hoggy. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, he's the other thing that struck me is he's, I think he said it himself, he's been in a lot of winning environments and that just naturally kind of brings, sets that expectation, doesn't it? 
Um, he's not going to set off uh, for um, for poor results. And obviously, the championship is a really difficult league, but we haven't got much of a worse team than last season. Um, like, like we've got some really good talents in there, and there's no reason why we shouldn't be uh, uh, winning at home and and doing decent on the road as well. Um, so yeah, I I really think he's going to be good. Um, I said this about Scott Field as well. <laughs> so we'll see what happens, but I've got a good feeling. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, that's a good point, James, but what Joe has touched on there. I think we always spin it into a positive, which we need, because let's be honest, town Twitter um, yeah. has its fair <laughs> share of negativity. So maybe it's good to spread a little bit of positivity in there. Um, but we, we thought it could work with Schofield. I mean, I know, obviously, James, you're, you're a big fan of Schofield as a player and as a man. Um, I think we both agree it didn't really work out. Do, do you think... Fotheringham's got a potentially better chance of it working out. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think with the Schofield thing, I mean, I think it's been probably been probably been discussed now, but I think that he just he just comes across as as very different in terms of who he's worked with and just the experience that he's already had. I think um, Schofield was very much like in the club, obviously promoted from within. And he just never quite felt like he was ready. Uh, whereas I feel like bothering him, just everything about it sort of exudes his kind of readiness and, and confidence in this role. Whereas Schofield said himself, you know, I'm not quite ready. And I understand why he's done that. And obviously, if that's how he feels, that's how he feels, you know. And But it's just, if you're a player, and or if, you know, even if you take it out of that setting, if you put it in like a workplace context, if you start work and you kind of think, You've just had a guy who will literally pretty much micromanage and do everything in fine detail, fine detail, and will spell everything out for you. And you know you'll have complex instructions, but you'll understand how to follow them. You work really well as this, this this sort of fluid team. And then suddenly a guy comes in and goes, "Oh, like he leaves," and another guy comes in and goes, oh, "I don't feel like I'm quite ready for this." You are like in any workplace, you would have a drop off, even just seeing it from a kind of purely like if you take football out of that perspective. So I think that just putting someone in with that with that same kind of don't know it's hard it's kind of that x factor isn't it of being a manager that is it's kind of it's i suppose it is a it's a thing that's important to players and it is that sort of unquantifiable isn't it that mm. um you know there there's a good there's good coaches there's good assistant managers but to to be like an actual leader who will you know without it sounding too cliche it there is like a certain gravitas and a certain like um, certain leadership skills and just sort of general manner that 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 you get from like a really strong leader, and that's kind of the vibe that I get. Obviously, we've seen one interview and he's not even managed a professional game, so it's difficult to comment further. But it just from from what I gather, I just get that a lot more from Fotheringham than I do than I do from Schofield. And yeah. as I say, I don't think that's any slack on Schofield. I just don't think he's quite ready. But I think the other thing is is that. Uh, Fotheringham could be quite confident in what he's seen as is going to work. I mean, Schofield had his own ideas to call around. I think that that became clear. Whereas we were kind of kind of expecting Corbran two point oh or Corbran plus, and we ended up getting something different. Whereas yeah. I think Fotheringham's got something that he's quite confident is going to work. Obviously, he's, he's coming from uh, managers like McGath, who were very disciplinarian. You know. Um, he was just McGath was described as the last dictator in Europe by uh, by by one of his former players, and it was there's, a, there's also I don't know if it's apocryphal, but there's a a tale of him telling a player to rub cheese on his knee when he's got an injury. So this is um, just like, but he, again, like learning from him, he's a guy who's won European trophies, he's won the Bundesliga. He's he does not a big name here, but over in Germany, like he's absolutely you know he's, he's huge. So. I think that it's um I think it's it's just that it is that quanti- unquantifiable that sort of x factor and uh, that matters to players and just that that kind of body language and readiness just just don't will matter to the players and as I say in any workplace I think it would be the same so that's that's kind of the way I see it obviously as I say it's hard to comment um and also he's he's coming into a structure that's already Although obviously it's not work, Schofield. The actual structure 
does seem to have worked with Bromby, uh, you know, in the past, well, not, not that long, but in the past year or so, it has, you know, with um, with Chico doing like the set pieces and, and the and the defensive work, like there is a structure there for him to come into. It's not like he's he's having to um, sort of start again absolutely from scratch. He's he's coming yeah. into a structure that hopefully will allow him to sort of perform. And and he's actually a players and a and a, and a culture that 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 would suit a hard working style of play, a hard work a manager that is going to like drive players. And and also, I mean that like a wider wider culture within the town and the club of of sort of. Uh, hard work and uh, you know so I think I think that's all I think there's all all positive signs really um, but yeah it's it's uh, yeah we'll have to see what happens what, um, Sorry, what, what do you what do you think to the appointment Brady um, it's tricky well it's tricky I, I think um, again I, I think if it's weird because if, if this was done in the summer I think I'd feel a lot better about it. I'm not. I'm not against it. Um, I just kind of think. I know it's early days, but we've we've had a really poor start, and if you like, it's kind of. I almost feel with the World Cup being in November, so what we've got like nine, ten games before we before the World Cup like disrupts the season. It almost feels like he's coming at the back end of a season, and then we'll have the World Cup, and then the season starts. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of how I'm I'm looking at it um which is a bit weird so I don't know I think I think his immediate job is it's almost a bit of a firefighting task and I'm not I'm not comparing it to Danny Cowley when he came in but there is some some similarities you know I think um we've played poorly um in some games or you know for whatever reason it's it's, it's not worked out I, I think We've talked about it a lot, but with Schofield, he was unlucky as well. I think luck was a was you know yeah. didn't go for him as well. Um, so I, I think it's quite quite a tough task at the beginning. He strikes me as like you know again, it's just an interview, but a strong personality. Um, and you know sometimes players need to kick up the ass, and you know they are professionals. Um, and I, I think I think he's maybe the right personality to get that. I just. Mm-hmm. I, I I just don't I don't I ha, I have concerns. I think it could work. I think it needs to be given time. But um, and it's not like we're rock bottom and, and going down and you know preparing for life in League One. But I'd be lying if it isn't a bit a bit of a gamble. Um, yeah. I know all our managerial appointments have been a bit of a gamble, but I suppose I'm just and I'm happy to be proven wrong, hundred percent. And this is this is no criticism of Fotheringham um, I think he's the type of coach we should be going for but I just think at this time I almost I think town just need a kind of <laughs> I just want us like a you know, mid-table season um, and I, I think this is a gamble that could pay off but maybe we just needed to play a bit safer mm. and maybe get someone more experienced just for the moment we're at now yeah I get what you mean I get what you mean um, we're certainly not going down that's guaranteed <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get that clipped. <laughs> Clip this in, man. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But I kind of find the consistency of the appointment almost refreshing. That like, mm. as a as fans, we've definitely criticised the board and and decision makers for being a bit all over the place or making wrong calls. And it's nice to see like that consistency finally taking hold. Like. He fits all the boxes that were described to us and that have been described in the past. And I think that's nice. And I think that sort of consistency like does pay dividends in the future. Um so yeah. Yeah. Um I think that's another angle why I'm, I'm quite quite happy about it. Yeah. And I mean, um, to be fair, like of course I'll, I'll be completely behind him and back the team. Yeah. And I saw some people obviously disappointed not being back there and kind of criticizing the appointment, but like we don't. Let's be honest. Like he's not. He's not managed a. He's not managed a professional game apart from when he stuck in. Stuck in when uh, Felix McGaff had yeah. COVID. So like, if he's, we don't know if he's crap. We don't know if he's good. Let's, why don't we give him the benefit of the doubt until we see? That's what we all did with Schofield. This is it. So I think this he deserves to do the same. Um, I, I could, mean, Joe, um, do you? Do you? Sorry. No, I was just going to say I could talk for a long time about those uh, those sort of town fans, but let's let's not. 
that's not right now. <laughs> well, I've just had it. I just had out just completely out. Given what what we've just been discussing, and sort of out of the blue, I've just decided mm-hmm. decided to go on Twitter and just type in HF, HDAFC hashtag and just Google it. Well, to put it into Twitter, <laughs> and it's just a lot of people of this. If I when I look sort of this morning, I'm not saying I do it all the time, but but my the vibe that I got this morning from people town fans on Twitter was a bad one. You know, it's taken age. Why is it taking so long to announce it? Why have we not got back there? Some people even suggesting that, oh, is he the assistant? And now we're just going to go, oh, we are getting back there after all. Don't worry about it. He's coming. <laughs> but, um, but since everyone's watched that interview, I think a lot of people feel the same. And I, I feel, okay. I feel like that. I feel like since as soon as I watched the interview, I kind of forgot about that. Was like, look, let's, let's move on. We're obviously not, we're obviously not getting it. We're obviously not got it. And, you know, I I think, obviously, you know, you can be, fo- you can be sort of, you can be sort of drawn in by, by characters and the way people are, but I, it's just the vibe, the vibe that I got was, was a good one. And, and, and sort of, as I say, it's not, I don't think it's just me. I think a lot of, a lot of people, the, the sense has sort of, I sense it has sort of twisted just that bit, just a bit more positive that people have just, seeing him come in and he's been this impressive figure. Mm. And I just think that that's obviously what's happened in the in the interview as well. That's what's happened, you know, when when they've interviewed him. And obviously it's a big thing for him because he's got to get all his all his family back over from Germany. It's not going to be like they're going to announce it straight away. You know, he's got to find a got to find a new life here. You know, so yeah, I think um I think I think he if if it go if it starts to go well, like town fans will quickly forget about Wagner. Obviously, never you know, never truly forget about Wagner, but do you know what I mean. They'll quickly move yeah. on from it. But yeah, yeah. The, the only problem is, is if it doesn't start well, then people will start to hang on. Oh, why have we not paid that bit extra for Wagner? Even though, well, we don't know the ins and outs, do we? We don't know really why it's not happened. But yeah, I just think um, I do think that there's been a slight mood change. If you can ever kind of fully well, detect positive. that, but that's positive. That's just. Um, yeah, yeah, that's just 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 sort of the way, the way that I, that I feel from a from a completely unscientific, uh, you know, poll that I've just done in my in my mind. But <laughs> I like you it. know, I do I do think it's um, I do think it's I do think first impressions are important. So and I, I don't think we quite got good first impressions on on the last two appointments really. Mm. So mm. you know, and um, I said I said to you guys as well. I think that. The Scottish coaches have got a good history at town, haven't they? With Lou Macari and you know Bill Shankly, if you want to go that far back. So there's there is a good. I mean, I said as well, you know, Scottish managers. It's just it's the best. Their best export, isn't it? Really, managers <laughs> in, in terms of like their actual achievements. Of Scottish managers. How many Scottish people are there? Not many. How many like in terms of the actual managers per head? That'd be some study. But you get you see what I'm getting at. I am yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I do, yeah, and I think um, I would. You, you're spot on about first impressions. Seeing that uh, interview, I, I feel feel a lot better, and I feel like it did make a good impression. Um, I don't know, like it's not. I wasn't doing it to be be negative. I mean, do, do you guys have any concerns? Because I think there is a lot of positives to take from that, you know. And the thing is, you, you touched on Wagner there. We have no idea what's going on. We could have offered it Wagner. And yeah. he could have said no, you know, like we he, we might not have even offered it to him. You know, like it's just um, we have no idea. So I don't like the decision has been made, and there's no there's no point speculating about who else it could be. Yeah. Um, and I think, like you say, it kind of fits with the structure. But um, I mean, Joe, do you know to to flip it? Do you do you have any concerns about it? I, I know we're feeling a bit positive after uh, seeing it. Um. Probably the ones that you like, the one that you outlined that like he yeah, is an unknown. Right, agree with me. <laughs> Back <on there. laughs> um, Yeah, he's he's an unknown, right? He definitely is. He comes across really well. He's the chances he had has he's clearly taken and done very well with, but he is an unknown. But I think I've kind of written that off as any new manager is a bit of an unknown, and we were never going to sign like a. a a well-known English manager, right? Realistically, it just wasn't going to fit into our the way we want to operate. So I kind of guess I've already mentally prepared for us to be getting a manager who we didn't know too much about. And everything he's done so far and everything you can trawl up on the internet sounds pretty good. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm not too worried. We do have a friend that found a quote from him where he said something like how he's not bothered about tactics at all. That's not his business or something like that. <laughs> but I imagine that was in the context of him like not taking anything away from the current manager, probably. Right. Um, but every everything you can find online is good news. Um, so I'm willing to take that and take the rest of the risks as just part and parcel of getting a new getting a new manager. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of quotes, he said in the past he when he led the team to when he was at Hertha Berlin and uh, Felix Bagath had COVID, he led them to a three 0 win and a German reporter asked him. Oh, it's like a brave heart performance, and he he snapped back. So uh, <laughs> just saying, I'm not brave heart. I'm a young coach. Why do you make this comparison? So um, I think that's good. I think Og- that's good. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Oggy and uh, Stephen Chicken might it might be a bit interesting in the press conferences yeah. if uh, things are a little bit spicy. So I couldn't imagine anyone having a go at Oggy, but if he if if he gets a bit yeah, bit some feisty interviews, that could be good. That I have good. um. I don't know whether we're supposed to read stuff out if we've not asked asked people if we're going to read stuff out, but I have seen someone formerly of this parish put a tweet out <laughs> saying the new manager looks a bit of a twat. I face, I like it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay. And I was... kind of, um, I kind of, I kind of like, I kind of see what they mean. I thought it like, um, you know, it was very. They were very. Uh, Corbran was very respectful one he and so was Schofield and you know we are we are I think that as in judging by the fan base in general yeah of course we we do care about fair play to an extent but everyone loves someone to kind of shit out a bit as well so I do think it would it could be nice sort of refreshing you know we were yeah. you know in Huddersfield there we're a sort of um, no nonsense people I would suggest so yeah it'd be interesting to see uh, see to see how, how that that pans out um, what was that quote about like a, a really old time writer when he first visited Huddersfield wrote something really funny like that? I forgot what it was. It was like he, he the came feral over people to, or something. Yeah, he's like never, <laughs> never as wild a people have I seen as when I went to Huddersfield or something like that. <laughs> Oh, there we go, James. I thought you were going to launch into a hated, adored, never ignored type thing. Uh-huh. But that's maybe because uh, Ian Brown's been doing karaoke in my neck of the woods recently. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, uh, well, I suppose we'll move on then, lads. Is there anything you want to want to add before we go to the media reaction? Closing statements. No, I think I made made my made Joe, have points. you looked up his stats on Football Manager yet? I haven't. I haven't. I just good? tried to load it up then, but it said <laughs> oh, the graphics drivers are not up to date, so oh I'll have to do it later. Oh no, wow. I haven't. Okay. Um, because I'd completely forgotten about him as a player, like as a, I know he alluded to it, um, but I'd completely forgotten that he was at like was he at Norwich and other places at some point. Yeah, I saw um, a Norwich journalist like, oh, this should be fun because I don't think he was the best player at Norwich, but like, oh, okay, you can be a crap player, like being a player who was crap, it has nothing yeah. to do with whether you're a good manager. It's often and... the case, right? There's never much overlap, like good player, good manager. I don't think. It... No, exactly, and and let's be honest, like. We're joking about football manager here, but no one, no one knows if he's going to be any good or not. We don't know how he's going to line up. Mm. We don't know what he's going to bring. Um, so it's quite exciting in that sense. Like we, we don't know what's going to come. Well, that was so, the only other thing I was going to add was just that yeah, I think with um, with Wagner and Corbran, they came in to like replicate their sort of mentors system. In terms of like Wagner came in to play like a Klopp style system, like Gag and Press or whatever, four two three one, you know, slash four three three. Then Corbrand's come in to play sort of Bielsa ball. Obviously, that didn't really happen in the end. And he's kind of tw- tweaked it to sort of our purposes. But with, there's a bit of an unknown quantity because I've no idea how Felix McGaff plays football, and um, you know, it's. <sighs> As much as I tried to do some prep and look into it, all, all I could find was just fitness and like just giving attacking players freedom. And I, I was just kind of thinking about that, sort of reflecting it back onto town. And I was just thinking that might work quite well if you just got kind of defenders who defenders and mid- midfielders who are really fit, do all the running, and then just try and just get it to Tino Andrin, basically. You know, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. And sort of Jack Radoni's. Um, and Sorbers, if you can just try and 
you know, it might even just be as simple as that of just trying to just simplify it and getting getting the ball to our sort of danger men in dangerous areas. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And, and let's be honest, like we can have a couple of difference makers. And I like you talk about Tino on his day. Um, you know, yeah. win win your games. And uh, I I think this is the thing. Like we're all in agreement. This squad really shouldn't be anywhere near relegation. No, I think it's good enough. So, um, that's it. It's particularly in the the striking department as well. We've got two two goal scorers that I don't know. People often talk about us need the goal scorer, but for me, we've got two goal scorers who are massively outperforming like their their XG and they're putting away chance apart from that one war he had but you know the most they're putting away chances it, it's the creation mm. and it's the stopping mm. them going in that's the problem isn't it so, that's true no absolutely yeah. and you, you tend to find the easiest thing to fix is defence I mean look, look, look what Chico did yeah. when, against Cardiff I know we're yeah. hanging on and Nichols had to save the penalty but you just kept you know if yeah. you keep a clean sheet you're going to got a good chance of winning games there's some insight for you some pun with that <laughs> um Cool. Okay. So we, we've all said about how we feel. Um, I wanted to kind of find out the neutral views um, from those in the media who do, do some podcasts. So I've um, got two two kind of chats coming up for you here. So um, earlier today, I caught up with Justin Peach from the Second Tier podcast, and here's what he had to say about the appointment. Hi, Justin. Thanks for chatting to me. Um, so I'm sure you'll have seen the news about Mark Fotheringham, the new Huddersfield Town boss. Um, what do you make of the appointment? I think the appointment's a risk, um, considering he's not had any prior managerial experience, that lends into that factor quite heavily. Um, we, we say this quite a lot about coaches who come in who haven't had any prior managerial experience. Rob Edwards has fallen foul at Watford, although there is the, the Watford hierarchy tax. But at the same time, Huddersfield's last, or well, five of the last six managers haven't had prior managerial experience um, before being appointed Um with, with you guys, obviously David Wagner, Jan Seawert, Cole Baran, Schofield, and now and now Fotheringham, um, yeah, have had no prior experience as a manager. Um, so that uh, that that aspect of taking a risk doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily um, abject from the from the from the board and the decisions they make. But yeah, it's certainly an interesting appointment, and and, and time will tell. The first three games will be very important for Fotheringham. So from the initial media um, that we've seen with the club, he seems like a bit of a no-nonsense character. Um, having seen Huddersfield so far this season, do you think that's the type of manager they need at this moment? The players definitely need a no-nonsense character. I think if you make internal appointments, um, I think sometimes players can see it as quite an easy ride for them because they know the manager or they know the manager coming in already. And I think that was the case with Danny Schofield. I don't think it helped that he just wasn't sure of his best his best side or his best 11. Um, but yeah, certainly that will lend into the fact as to why he wasn't successful. Um, so Fotheringham coming in, coming in and his very strong Scottish accent already, it's already, yeah, he's already going to yeah create a, a, an atmosphere at the club that um, he's not going to let things pass, um, which is a, which is a big thing. And he has had a fair bit of coaching experience over the last five years. He's, he's dotted around a bit in Germany. He's gone back to Scotland he has cut his teeth and he has been trusted by Felix Magat, although Felix Magat and his methods are quite strange. Um, yeah, he has been trusted at a, a relatively big club over the last few months in Hertha Berlin. So certainly um, certainly the type of manager they need. Um, I don't think they've had that sort of manager probably since maybe Danny Cowley um, to an extent, but not certainly for a long time, not that I can remember. And finally, what are your expectations for Huddersfield Town this season uh, now following this appointment? Well, my expectations for Huddersfield um, are that they are in a dogfight. They're in a dogfight and they need to scrap for points. You can't be playing nice football um, at this point, at this stage in the season, because <laughs> there's a lot of points to make up. There's a lot of games that need to be won. Um, so for me, um, the next five or six games and even the next month before the World Cup starts in, in Qatar, um, there's a lot of games to be played. And if Huddersfield can win three or four of those games, um, will be it scrappy. And then you go into that, month-long break while the World Cup's on and you basically reset after Christmas and go again. Huddersfield just need to win three or four games over the next um, few weeks and then I think that all will be okay given the time that I thought Fotheringham will have a minute pre-season if you wish but certainly still think relegation is a very real threat for the club. We've heard from Justin. Uh, I also spoke to another familiar voice uh who's been a guest on this podcast before elliot jackson uh he's from the podcast the championship chat 
And here's his thoughts on Huddersfield's new boss. Hi guys, Elliot Jackson here from the Championship Chat podcast with some initial thoughts on Huddersfield Town's appointment of Mark Fodderingham, of course, succeeding Danny Schofield after a couple of weeks searching. Um, one slightly out of the blue, but that's probably something we should expect with Huddersfield Town probably since the Cowleys left, really. Carlos Corbran was a left field appointment at the time. Schofield obviously then replacing him and now at Mark Fodderingham, um, with the man tasked with uh, steering the club into, into mid-table and beyond. I think initial thoughts would have to be, obviously, it is a gamble again. But we've seen, probably with the last two appointments, the the different extremes of which that can work out. Obviously, Carlos Corbran proving to be a, a bit of a masterstroke by the owners to bring him in, albeit the first season wasn't brilliant, finishing 20th, conceding a lot of goals. We saw last season um, the, the qualities he had in, in turning that team into a promotion challenger finishing third in the table and completely transforming their, their defensive output in particular. Um, obviously, it's not worked out under Danny Schofield. I, I was quite vocal at the time and felt that it was quite an unambitious appointment from the club when the, the stock was probably as high as it's going to be. You know, for, for a club of Huddersfield Town's sort of stature in the championship, you're not going to have a better opportunity to appoint a really ambitious coach than they had in the summer and they went for Danny Schofield it didn't work out it, it did look a little bit doomed from the offset but you might have said similar when Cowley went and, and uh, Corbran came in so happy to judge this one as we go but I would have to say initial reaction is it's a gamble again and we'll have to see obviously the the most recent gamble which was Schofield and, and didn't pay off is the one that sticks in your mind right now but you have to remember that Corbran was was a pretty similar gamble and, and that paid off pretty well. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Um, been doing some, obviously, research for the pod about his character, his background and, and, and his initial media interviews. And certainly seems like someone that's got a clear ideology, someone that doesn't lack self-confidence, I think you could say, from, from some of the quotes that are both historic and uh, recently in his, his first media interviews. I do think they need a bit of a figurehead at the club, I would say. I think it would be good to have a personality that that people can look to. I think with Carlos Corberan, it felt like he was the most important person at the club. And I think with Huddersfield Town, they don't really have any, any real star players after losing Lewis O'Brien and losing Harry Toffolo. So you're probably looking at Sober Thomas as probably the headline player in that squad. So I think having someone with some authority, somebody who can be seen as the figurehead of the club, I think will be a good move for Huddersfield. And we'll just have to see how things develop with that. In terms of the expectations of what I would expect from Huddersfield this season, obviously it's been a, a pretty horrific start. They've not played well in many matches. And they're currently sat in the relegation zone. Now, I never expected them to be challenging again this season at the top end of the table, that's for sure. I think last season was a little bit of a fluke. And when you lose your manager and your best two players, that that's there's obviously going to be a decline. I didn't expect the team to be in a relegation fight this this year. I, I had them comfortable mid table in our one to twenty four predictions at the start of the season. I would probably lower that slightly now, um, based on the start of the season. The fact that ultimately they've lost ten games, but I still think you know lower mid table is is very much achievable for this Huddersfield Town squad. There's still some good players. Some players starting to emerge as well in from the wreckage of the summer, such as Etienne Kamara, who obviously played really well in their last match before the international break. I think Josh Ruffles is starting to grow into the role at left-back as well after being chucked in a little bit at the deep end with Toffolo leaving the club in the summer. So I think there's there's positive shoots that if Fotheringham can, can work with these players and um, hopefully click, I think there's enough in the squad and I think there's enough elsewhere in the championship in terms of, of lack of quality to suggest that I would expect Huddersfield Town to certainly be anywhere between 13th to 18th I think would be where I would think probably the, the lower end of that scale right now but there's no reason why if they catch fire a little bit there's a long way in this season to go why they can't be be hitting sore in and around the top half of the table but my initial assessment and my initial expectation for Huddersfield would be to stay up relatively comfortably but I think anything above 15th would should be viewed as a, a positive season from this point onwards. There you go. We cover all championship podcasts here. So nice views there. Right, gents, we did get some questions. Um, so I think that means it's time for the mailbag. 
You've got mail. Tom always says he loves that jingle. So uh, it's, a good, it's a good one. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> I love how we. <laughs> it's so obvious that I edit them in afterwards, and you have no idea what they are. <laughs> what? So, Wait a minute, <laughs> Mister <what>? Postman. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the new one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, first question we got. Um, again, so when we asked these, some of them were. Um, well, maybe on the more negative side. Um, but I've got a no. good one, but it's not related. To... No, shock. Can you believe it? <laughs> they work, will they? <laughs> uh, I've got a good one at the end that's not related to the manager at all, actually. Um, but we'll start with this one. Uh, Marcus Baylor asks, what do you think of this whole scenario? Second an inexperienced head coach and hiring a new one pretty much in the same position. Always going to back the new coach, but does the head coach only mentality harm the club? Uh, could you compromise with a manager and work together? I think that's, we've kind of touched on it a little bit about the structure, but um, I don't know, guys. I'll come to you first, Joe. Do you, do you think the structure's maybe holding us back from getting out a manager? Uh, I think that comes down to whether you like or dislike the structure. Personally, I like the structure, so I I disagree with that, that point. Um uh, I like the structure, so I think it's going to bring us good managers that that bring success. I think uh, football's probably uh, football in England anyway is probably going to start to move that way anyway. So I think it's it would benefit us to get ahead of the game. But aside from that, I just quite like the idea of it. I didn't used to. I used to be one of those people that that thought a manager should do absolutely everything. But maybe if you get experts in in other areas and let them the the manager do more of the coaching, then uh, I think that's that's a, a better idea. Get them to focus on one thing rather than spinning lots of different plates. Um, so yeah, I think it would be a step back to to change it and try and get some old fashioned. I want to do everything manager in. That's my view. That's a very well put forward view, James. Are you going to disagree? I suppose uh, no, I think that if you look at when they brought the new system in, I see it as when they appointed Wagner, which is when I first noticed it, when they sacked manager Chris Powell and brought in head coach David Wagner. Mm. And mm. I remember thinking then, thinking, ooh, what's this? Some kind of continental <laughs> manager, yeah. football director thing. Oh, not sure about <laughs> this. But if you trace it from that point, then it, it's been a overwhelming success yeah. and I think that if um, obviously we've we've had the the rise and fall of Huddersfield Town you know in, in the last five years but I think that I was just I just again I'm, it's, this this podcast is much about me googling things and commenting on them but I think I've just googled <laughs> championship managers and I've just gone through like who who what other ones would you appoint and I, I was just thinking back to pre the structure I was just thinking like it's just the same the same kind of people just doing the same kind of things you know Mm. like you sort of I mean he's done well now I kind of can't believe myself but like Mark Robbins Chris Powell like great Simon Grayson you know I know Aidy Boothroyd wasn't our manager then but he he could have been you know Mm. it's just like all that kind of same same same-ish kind of thing Um, and then Obviously, there's like your your sort of older managers as well, but it's all just going to be that that sort of thing, and they can probably get you like mid table, but a bit like the Chris Powell era towards the end, where like just no one's no one's really turning up, and we're sort of te- we're sort of taking draws, and I'd kind mm. of obviously for this this season <laughs> the goal has to be like staying up and mid table, but I think just in general it's nice to have. It's just I do agree with like I do agree with like their approach in, t- in terms of just trying to get trying to do things a little bit different, trying to get someone with a bit more sort of perspective, a bit more bit of a different approach, like a, a kind of fixed way of playing. You know, it's you know I think a lot of us have good memories watching town playing direct football, but I think just the way the way the game's sort of going, I think that it is it is good to see like a manager come in and. And play like a certain way, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have that much of a, of a problem with the structure. I just think it's, it's just like doing, 
he's making the right calls and doing the things correctly. I, I think there's maybe a case of you, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater just because of the Schofield thing and just go back to like, right, just get like Chris Powell in and he does everything. Or I just can't really think of even who else you'd go back to with that structure. I think that just, and it's also just, you just don't want to hand, hand someone the keys to the place. Um, yeah, every yeah. couple of years, yeah. it's just, and then you know you see what what's happened with like Man United, where it's just, it's just like how many different managers, players have they got like still from like hangovers from like years ago, you know, and it's just I think that it's it's good to like recruit like Huddersfield Town players, and then recruit a manager that fits in with Huddersfield Town players. Don't just get in whichever managers currently on like the merry go round and whoever's you know whoever's done x y and z so i get I, I get the sort of concern about the inexperience of like the managers we appoint it's like we only ever appoint managers who've never managed before which, which is a <laughs> bit like bizarre if you, if you put that in like any other workplace context or any other kind of context yeah. but i do i do think that in general the structure's kind of born through it'd just be interesting to see if fotheringham can like bring in a Bringing an assistant, I I don't know if he if if that's cheaper, but or or if um, or if he's going to get the chance to bring someone in who's like a bit more of an experienced head and and sort of do it that way rather than paying like hugely over the odds for a manager, he's sort of a bit over the hill who's been up and down the country, probably managed us in the nineties or something. You know, I'm thinking of Steve Bruce, but uh, you know, like just someone someone like that. It's just I just don't really feel like I just don't really feel like that's not what we need and. I quite liked, you know, we, we took the risk with Wagner and it's worked. We took the risk with Corbyn mm-hmm. and it's worked. And it's, yeah, I mean, we have very much been shit or bust, but I mean, maybe maybe that's the risk you take, you know. And uh, But I, I think I'd rather have it this way than just the same old, like, tired names, you know. No, I I, I agree. I think um, the, the reason, I think the reason why they did this, you know, I know it's hard to always bring logic into football because it's you know a very emotional thing and we you know we feel strongly about it. But I think if you look at what happened when we were in the Premier League, you know, and when Dean was ill, um, Fagner was kind of left to everything. And um, you know, I think we can all say looking looking back on it now, when he when he went, we lost our way and we lost kind of our identity as a club. Um, so putting in a structure like this, it kind of it reduces the damage that can have because, you know, I think most fans are realistic. We we understand that, um, you know, there are always going to be clubs who can pay managers more, can offer higher transfer fees. Um, and I suppose you touched on it there, James, like to fit in a structure, you have, as Joe pointed out, you have people who have maybe more expertise in certain areas and they can focus on the core. But then also from a for a club like Huddersfield that, you know, can't go out and uh, buy the best players, you know, compete, pay top dollar. Um, it it kind of makes sense to to go for people who are kind of young and up and coming because mm-hmm. if you, you know, as we've seen with Carlos and, and Wagner, um, if you get them, something great can happen and you can kind of defy the odds. So um, I think if we, and then the thing is, if we've not really had it, but um I suppose maybe you could argue with Carlos if you're being a bit uh, cheeky, but if someone comments, you know, if they do a good job at Huddersfield, um, they are going to get poached by a, a team that has more more money to, to chuck at it. Like, that's just kind of how it's going to happen. But that's fine, you know, because you have the other people, so you won't lose kind of the day-to-day running and other things, and you can just bring another coach in to do that. So I, I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think, it, I think it works, and I think it's a good model, and you spot on guys really like who, you know, I know there was kind of talk about Danny Cowley and he wanted to be kind of a more manager involved in other things of the club. But if they go, you know, like it's a results business as we've seen, like Danny Schofield's had 10 games and he's gone, you know? So if that happens, like, and you've got a manager in place, who's doing everything, you lose your way. So yeah. well, it's uh, it's three yeses. We're happy with, with the, <laughs> uh, with the structure, but um, it was a good question. Yeah, uh, yeah it was, was a good was, question. I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to um, say as well, the only the thing that they, they do tend to emphasise is like the managers do, well, apart from maybe Wagner and Siva, which is maybe where like the Bromby influence comes in, but they do tend to choose managers who do have good experience within English football as well. Like I was just comparing mm. 
comparing to like Hull, who have got in. Um, I'm not even going to try and say his name. The Hull or manager. the Barnsley manager at the end of the year, who I'm also not going to try and say his name. But it's uh... like it's like they they've obviously done. They're obviously shit hot in their own in their own leagues in their own countries. But then it's kind of like at least with. With this guy, he's got like a lot of experience of English football, and like Corbran, he had he had a lot of experience of English football. Yeah. So they're not coming in like completely blind, like a lot of other sort of Championship appointments in the league. So I do think that's like a key factor as well. Yeah, good point. Yeah, um, no, good point. So another question we got, uh, and this got an interesting one. So it's from um, HD Hannah One. Um, she's asked. She's asked. Interested to know what your thoughts are on the comp situation about the manager. Um, we're paying a team at the club for this, but it was a bit of a mess about how it, how it was announced. Um, I don't know, Joe. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, and there's maybe not. Yeah, not just this manager. Right, there's been a few things um, like with the. There was the kit launch, wasn't there, where it was leaked a few... Was it last season or the season before, even? And then... The Turkish kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then that striker from uh, from Ipswich that we signed. Um, I know there was talk that maybe there was, like, late interest from West Brom, but in which case, don't, like, don't release interviews unless it's already wrapped up and over the line. Yeah, they seem to be a bit, a bit inconsistent. Like, they'll release things before it's it's all tied up or the information is already out there like with following them but they keep it wrapped up for a while and maybe there's there's like legal things at play that we don't understand um but probably more likely that they've just been a bit a bit loose with it maybe um but i have to say brady you're you're more well positioned to comment maybe on how these things work how these cogs turn in a from a media perspective more than me well, anyway. yeah. so i'm interested to hear your take well as you know joe in, in the past life i've i've worked in uh, comms teams for many major football clubs <laughs> <laughs> uh no i suppose I, no I, i'm joking um i think uh i i don't want to i suppose the the only thing i would say is um and this isn't to, to excuse them, but um, this obviously it's been a really difficult month for him, given, given what mm. happened with um, Eleanor. You know that was awful, and I think obviously the unfortunately the person down in the team and the emotional and, and mental effects that must have had because because it was you know sudden, and obviously we send our um, respects and you know kind of sympathy and well wishes to to the families and. Um, I think that would, I think that would possibly have effect. I, I mean, I, I don't know the individuals in question in the comms team, but I know if that had happened to me in that situation, that would certainly um, affect me and you know how I carry out my work. And I mean, even if you take a side, uh, take that out for a second, you know, I, I've worked in jobs where um, you know, from a comms perspective, you try and try and work all this out, but like. <laughs> It's pretty fun. Like it's pretty funny that someone is looking for a sign for like where they're at KFC and you see the boss there. Um, <laughs> like you can't really plan for those things. Um, in fairness, I I think it's just um, it's tricky. Like you said, there's there's re who knows why it didn't get announced. Like it seemed to the formalities potentially is it's been something that was mentioned, but um, yeah. it, I don't know. Like I'm not sticking up for the club and people say, oh. I, happy clappers but it's tricky because Wimp. i think these things you don't you don't care when things are going well i know that's such an obvious thing to say and i know stephen chicken and david yeah, Hardy definitely. say this but if we're winning if we if we're like you know like we were like third no one cares about the comms particularly i think it's just like when things aren't going well and we've had a bad start to the season yeah you know this stuff gets magnified a bit more um mm. So I do think that's part of it. I don't think it was great. I think if you asked anyone who worked in the comms team, I don't think it maybe went as how they um, how they would have liked. I think as well, it's not been a great start, you know, particularly with Carlos leaving and how Schofield was announced kind of in the end of that statement. Yeah, there was that. Um, yeah, there was that, that wasn't yeah. clear. But then, you know, if you look at other clubs, I think um, 
we do get updates. You know, we do get monthly updates from from kind of Lee Bromby and Dean Hall, and I don't think a lot of clubs get that. So they do they do do some good things. It's tricky. Um, I think they've they've made a few mistakes recently, but um, you know. I also think you can give too much. It's again like results. It's a results business. It dictates a lot of things. But you can kind of over give information that gives more people to to point out. And I think I think Phil yeah. would, um, you know, Phil Hutchinson. He fell for that a couple of times. Say one thing, then um, you know, it's, it elaborates on something else, and it kind of contradicts. Um, you know, I, I think people can pull it apart a bit more. I don't know, James. What, what do you yeah. think? I've kind of uh, uh, ranted on there. No, I think. Um... I think both really good points. I think sometimes I was kind of thinking, does it really matter at the end of like you kind of thought you're saying, Brady? I'm not. I'm not trying to devalue you know your your work, but um, oh, don't. What, it's not, it's not what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, what I'm trying to say is that it, it it's sometimes <laughs> what you say rather than how you say it. You know, is the ultimate sort of end result. Yeah. You know, he's the manager. Just because you didn't do it the day before, or you know, just because it, it wasn't announced when someone else thinks it should be, it's like, it, you know, I've just um, again, it's me, it's me looking at my computer and stuff, you know, while I'm on the podcast. But it's, I was just looking at the Twitter and I was just looking down and straight into it, it's like the line is like into the thick of it. He's training, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'll, I like this because also you're thinking, I don't know who this guy is. And then suddenly you see like. It looks like he's kind of giving yeah. players a bollock in. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm liking this. And just because maybe with maybe they've kind of taken it on board with the Dennis Schofield thing that he didn't get a proper intro, he didn't get a proper promo, you know, he didn't get that proper sort of initial hits on the sort of campaign. Whereas this time they've gone, no, look, like let's just hold it off, wait, you know, wait for the announcement and only release it when we've got loads of videos of him like telling John Russell that he needs to run more. Do you know what I mean? I think that. Yeah, you know, it, it is. It is like it is what I want to see. So, yes, it's late, but you know, it, the actual messages that are coming across are good. Um, yeah. You know, it's and the actual content I think is good. I think that the the thing that people are critical of is like the time that it's taken. But I think sometimes people just have to be patient. I think we live we live in like kind of an instant gratification, don't we? Whereas everyone wants to know exactly what's happening. Everyone wants everything like confirmed. It's like, you just, I think sometimes we just, we just need to just wait and let, let things like just take the course. And I know people want to know what's happening to the football club and I don't want to kind of dismiss that. But me personally, I've just kind of like, as long as the stuff's good that's coming out and like all the messaging is, is sort of on point then, I don't really have an issue with like the way that it's done or like the kind of the kind of timings that it's done. I just I just want it to sort of be there and I, I'm kind of liking it. So yeah, I get what people are saying. I think that the Schofield one was was worse and maybe they've just they're just trying to overcompensate. Uh, but me personally, I like it. I like to see like videos of like a new manager out on the training pitch straight away. And it was in a way I kind of like the fact that it's like. God, people are going to come with a right happy clapper, aren't they? But it's like he's literally on the training pitch even before it's been announced. It's like that is that is the focus. That is his focus. That's like the club's focus, which surely it should be. Why you know get him on the training ground first, then do all the made media stuff after? Yeah. Like, yeah, you do. So what he's supposed to like miss training all that day just because he's like getting filmed all day? But like, no, get him in training. Get him doing the stuff. Get him, then get him into the media building when he's done that. You know what I mean? Do all that kind of thing then get it out later. It makes, to me, it makes sense, but I get that people want it, want it confirmed, they want it at the moment, but yeah, yeah, it's just, um, for me, I think, like you say, Brady, if people start winning, no one's even asked about social media, are they? No one's yeah. bothered. It's, it's a, it's, it becomes a point of frustration when things aren't going well or we're not getting like, you know, it's like when we're getting signings and people are having to go to the club for announcing sponsors. It's like, well, They've literally got to announce sponsors. They can't just go like, oh, yeah, you know, we're sponsored by uh, Miller's Oils or whatever, but they're just not <laughs> going to tweet it. They have to tweet it. Like, otherwise, it's yeah. not a sponsorship, is it? If you don't tell anyone that you're yeah. sponsored by him, it's not a sponsorship. So, yeah, I think, yeah. Um, again, like you say, like a few wins and no, really, no one cares, do they? But, yeah, yeah. I, get, I get what people are, are, are getting at, but me, it doesn't bother me personally. And like you said, in terms of a leak, it's a bloody good leak. Yeah, seeing him yeah, on the training pitch. Yeah, I like it as a league. It's very good. It's a good uh, league, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, conspiracy uh, theory. It was actually leaked by someone tomorrow. at the club. Yeah, I was wondering that. I was wondering <laughs> that. I was wondering no, what, like one of the thick of it leaks. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing is as well, like, if, for example, right, th- this is the thing where it's like, we've kind of gone on for a bit now, but if that video gets posted of him on the training pitch before it's officially announced, how, one, I can't remember what time it was, but say it's like in the evening, like, th- people aren't working at the, they'll work at the club late but like people are working there 24 hours a day so yeah, no. i imagine quite a few people have gone home and then also surely it looks worse from a kind of like you you're right james about the narrative surely it looks worse if you're like hastily getting something out after that video has gone out yeah i think that kind of looks like you're just i don't know doing it because you've been caught out and um like you say exactly. I, I, the thing is this is it i also think because it's the international break and there's not been a lot to talk about like mm. we can kind of focus on stuff more because there's no football yeah, definitely. but you know if he gets you spot on if he gets two wins like people aren't gonna care like people are gonna completely i think that's it as well like me personally if 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 it came out it was like mark fotheringham new town boss and it was just like that picture nothing else for like two days i'd be like what is this about like yeah. do you know what i mean if there was nothing to come with it, if there was no interview, if there was no like him on the training pitch, like yeah. I would be kind of like, who's this guy? And why is there just one picture of him? So you've got to build that Brady will know much more than me, but you've got to build that kind of campaign, haven't you? It doesn't just it doesn't just happen at like uh the sort of click of a finger and he's got to come over here, he's got to bring all his family over here. You don't know the ins and outs of his family. They might have their other commitments. It, it can't all just happen at like the click of the fingers, you know. It's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. All right, well, we've been happy clappers enough. I mean, it's uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll balance it up by going, it's poor, it's rubbish, worst thing I've ever seen. Disgrace. <laughs> Sack them all. There you go. That's balance for you. Um, <laughs> so, uh Another question, uh, one I won't have the answer to, but Dan Peckett asked, what do you predict Mark Fotheringham's uh, favourite pie will be? Because we had the pie chat on Saturday. Um, don't know. Uh, Stephen Chicken, if you're listening, please ask him in his first press conference. So that'll be a good first impression for you. Um, <laughs> I'll got... find out. I was just going to say, I've got, I've got no doubts what I'm going for. All right. He's a, Yours he's a... or his? His, his, his. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's a steak and ale man, 100%. Steak and ale man. Okay. <laughs> see it all over his face. <laughs> well, literally. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, think he, I think he might go for a chicken ball, maybe. But I think, Ooh. yeah, I think I was going to say something Scottish related, but then I've heard what you said about Braveheart. He also seems a bit scary. So I really <laughs> don't want to say that now. <laughs> yeah, something and... like that. Something, uh, something uh, proper, kind of. Oof, no nonsense. No nonsense. Guys. Let's ask. Who yeah. knows? We don't know anything about him, really. I mean, um, <laughs> this is why we don't get led into the uh, pre-match presses. <laughs> I would just love to ask this. <laughs> what's your lineup up for the Reading game? Listen, no, Brady. Uh, Brady uh, what's your favourite pint? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Brady. I love a steak and ale. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was good. Um, though. That was good, yeah. I, d- I didn't want to give you too much credit. Um, maybe we shouldn't do the Scottish accents. Um, no, like you say, so like doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's, uh, Matt's already called him uh, Jürgen Jock, which I'm sure he'll, he'll love. So, um, yeah, there we go. Yeah, thank you. I groan too. Um, yeah. <laughs> didn't know you anyway, could still say that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you could still say that. I don't think you can. I'm pretty sure he tweeted it. But anyway, um, so uh, I'm not betraying trust uh, to quote the famous meme. Uh, anyway, okay, this is a bit of a cheeky one. Will Harris asked, what League One stadium are you looking forward to most visiting this season? <laughs> so I'm going to say... Get out. Get, no, I'm going to say Bratton Park when we play them in the Carabao Cup. Ooh, yeah, Ooh. yeah, take that. Messed your question. Um <laughs> we will see you now. Um, it won't be Bradford Nash. Cities. We, we, know, we know that. It will not be Bradford Cities. So they will not be going up. So we will not be going down. And it's on record. Don't make me clip things. Um, <laughs> clip them. Yeah, no. We, well, we've got Kieran Harrod doing an inside job. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Joking. Yeah. Joking. Uh, this one 
It's nothing to do with the manager, and I really liked it. Jay Bentley asked, uh, will Johnny Hogg have a testimonial? If so, who will be most excited about you? Which player will you be most excited about seeing back in the town strip? I think Hoggy will have a testimonial. I remember when Schindler left, he said Hoggy had already invited him to his testimonial. Oh. So um, that, yeah, make it happen. Uh, we'd love that. But uh, Joe, who would you be most excited to see back? I'm trying to think players who play with Hoggy. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Well, I've I never, think... I've never actually watched a testimony. Is it just the players? Me neither. Is Me it just neither. the players from the one club they're at, or could it be? No, no, you could have. I like, don't know uh, how it works. I think it'd be it funny depends. to see like Boris Diary and Troy Deeney line up up front. <laughs> well, Fre- Fraser Campbell, uh, funny enough, was at a Manu like Legends eleven and the Liverpool. So I, I think it's normally. They normally seem to be like a town, the club they're at, so it'll be like a Huddersfield Town 11. Oh, and okay. it's normally like a, depending on if they want to play a particular team or you could like make it up of... Like an invitational almost. Yeah, like, like not quite rest of the world, but yeah. do you know what I mean? Kind of kind of like that. So I'd, um, I'd, I'd probably go for Schindler or Mounier. It would have been Schindler for sure, but I think Mounier really like endeared himself loads and loads more towards the end of his time at town like he was just getting better and better from that perspective yeah. um with his Marston's chicken escapades and rumors yeah. of him oh, did he say something to a Leeds fan refuse to have a picture with the Leeds fan or something like that yeah all yeah. great stuff all great stuff let's go Mooney I'll go Mooney I'll leave Schindler up in 20 you two <laughs> oh nice James are you gonna go for Schindler uh probably would have done yeah I think I think it would would be great to just see him back, uh, you know, whether he's got that face mask on or not. You know, it's, uh, it'd be great to see him back. Lovely, lovely. Um, I, you made a good point. Like, I mean, probably Hog's most famous moment, not town, is uh, being the Hog oh, DD. So, yeah, Troy Deeney would play. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. not going Troy Deeney because we never, thankfully, we've never seen that in a town trip. Um, I mean, there's the tapping here, lads. Aaron Moy. Can you imagine if they got oh, Aaron Moy back? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah, would love that. Yeah. yeah. Great he's, stuff. He's a class act. He's a class yeah. act. Don't know if you've seen yeah. him playing for Celtic, but it's so easy in that league for him. He could have his eyes closed. Oh, no, really? <laughs> he's so good. He's still so good. <laughs> um, that's another one for you. Like, the rumours that we'd get Moy because he was a free agent. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then people are disappointed. I do think that's just wishful thinking. Like, yeah, he must be on a fortune still. He must be on an absolute uh, fortune. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to go Moy. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting mm. to see, actually. I wonder who... So is that, is, is that coming up end of this season, then? Is it? I don't know. I've not heard anything official, but um, what, he joined in 2013? So he'd have reached his oh, 10 right. years next Maybe year. So you'd quick. assume they'd do it end of next season. Yeah. Um, yeah. If the club aren't sure, I think I speak for all town fans when uh, we 100% want to see a hoggy testimonial. Like, make that happen. He, that man deserves it. Yeah. Um, so, make that happen. I mean, maybe. I think he, he could, will do uh, it. He's got another deal, hasn't he? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He signed, signed yeah. a new deal. Didn't he? When, was the last, when was the last town player that had a testimonial? Oh, cool. that's, a really that's, good a, question. that's a good one. Paul, one after the. Uh... This is what I mean. I've never seen one. I've never. Yeah. The only never... one I remember is like Earl Crabtree for the Giants. Ooh. Like I've only ever seen Giants testimonials. I can't remember a, a town one. Don't know if that's one for HDAFC Stata. That's a Stata. Yeah, yeah. Try and find out. Yeah. Um, there'll be, yeah, a, or, there'll, or, be uh, there'll be a listener that knows. Uh, HTSA will know all. Yes. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah. Maybe um, Lee Morris I'd, really, I'd really like to know that. Who would you guess be? Because I feel like Booley should have been chucked. He's, Booley must I have feel like 10 Booley. years of football. I know not concurrent, but he must have <laughs> been 10, 10 years, years of football. Of football. <laughs> no, with town, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, I can't even think did of Did he have one? I, no, he didn't I have I don't one. think so. I don't think so. I feel like I don't remember that. No, yeah, I'm trying like to think. We had, um, the only thing I remember with town, no, it wasn't testimony. I was going to say, they played Arsenal, but that was because of Herbert Chapman, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like a centenary yeah. game. Uh, mm. Anyway, oh, mm. to commemorate Booth's service to the club, 
Tom played a testimonial match against Spanish league side Real Sociedad. What a random! <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember that. I didn't go. I didn't go. What booth? It was like pre-season. Yeah, yeah. But then signed a one-year extension. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's under one year extension, so yeah, some people, some listeners might have been at that, so they can they can tell us what the uh, the team were like. And, oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do a call out on social. It. If you went to that game, do share. I want to I want to know more about that and why yeah. Real Sociedad. Yeah, yeah it's kind of it is sometimes like a really weird team, isn't it? I think it's just whoever they could arrange to play in a friendly. But I do remember us playing them, and it being very glamorous because we were being in League One. But I don't, I, I didn't go. Um, I don't know. Testimonials are a bit funny, aren't they? I don't really like f- sort of fake football that's not real, but there you go. Well, to be fair, maybe maybe Boovy got a holiday out of it. Maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, lads, we'll we'll move on. Uh, but that's a good one. I, I, when Hoggy's testimonial does happen, I think we can all get very excited about that. Yeah. Um, but we've got a game to talk about because um, the international break is over, baby, and league football is back. Can you smell it? Oh, it smells good. Um, let's talk about Reading who we're playing on Saturday. Um, they're, uh, they're third in the league, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they've lost four games already this season. So uh, they've played 10, won, won six and lost four. Um, and from what I've seen, and I spoke a little bit to Justin Peach earlier in the day, like they're either win by a close margin or, or seem to lose like three or four nil. So um, who, who knows to what you expect? Hopefully... We've got a bit of a new manager bounce yeah. Um, with this one. Um, but yeah, so kind of looking ahead, um, how are you guys thinking about this? It's going to be an inter- I mean, we have no idea um, what Fothering is going to do. Um, how would you guys kind of approach this? I had a quick look at the only get that her, her to her for Berlin game where it was, it was a 3 0 win. It was kind of only game in charge. It was a, a 4 1 4 1 formation that he played. Okay. Um, and we've played that, so I wonder. I wonder if maybe we'll do that. Um, but yeah, how, how are you guys feeling about this one, Joe? Um, I think, it, despite the new manager bounce, it's going to be tough. Uh, um, and yeah, I wasn't really too sure about formations or anything like that. Um, I was, I was mainly when I was looking at Reading's team, I was like, wow, I can see where they've done quite well. They've got a lot of solid to good championship mm, players I like especially that. especially like attacking they've got what Tommins, <laughs> Hoylet, Andy Carroll definitely still decent at this level. Uh, oh, God, Lucas God. Zhao, Shane Long like they've got they've got like good attackers. Um, mm. um but yeah I like you said they've also lost a lot of games so it could go either way and I think with our bounce that could obviously go in our favour. Um I actually went for a draw though because I, I wasn't we d- we did win away at Reading last season, didn't we? I think, but yeah, other three. than that, I think we've always sort of struggled a bit. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be a tough game. I think it'll be a tough game. I think if we were left there with a draw, it I'd be pretty happy with that, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm going the same. Um, we obviously we we normally do the format of our like opposition player. I think you kind of touched on a few there. I forgot Andy Carroll was playing for them. He's got yeah, the two shirts. I well. did as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that could be a bit of an interesting one. Helic up against Carroll. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Like we say, who knows? I I kind of got a feeling draw. Just like one of them. Um, no idea how Tom Ince is uh, playing for Reading with uh, Paul Ince as manager, but who knows? Yeah. He's not two playing goals, bad, I don't think. Two goals no, he's assist. playing pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, not yeah. bad. Not bad. We've said it on the pod many times. Oh, I certainly have, but he's always one of my what ifs that will be kept mm. for another season. Um, mm. James, anyone stand out for you for Reading? Yeah, some of the same ones. I mean, obviously. Uh, Navi Sar, formerly of this parish, oh, one goal yeah. in two games. Yeah, uh, what a record! So, so obviously, that's a fifty percent record, which I'm sure he'll keep up for the whole season. Um, <laughs> he's um, we obviously know we obviously know all about him. Uh, that Reading play with a back three, which I think suits him a lot better. Uh, but I think he missed the last game due to injury. I'm not sure how serious that is, but so he may miss this one. Um, the only other thing I noticed is the classic Sunday League thing, which is just noticing a dodgy keeper. 
yeah. they've got Joe Lumley, who was at Borough last oh. year, who a lot of people blamed for Borough not making the playoffs. So it's kind of that thing of like, just shoot for many well lots. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, no, I did again, like not really sure, not watched ready enough to know how well he's doing, but obviously that's just something to bear in mind. And uh, yeah, just echo a lot of what you guys said. They've got quite a lot going forward. Um, maybe lost lost a couple of players in midfield um, who were important to him. And yeah, they're kind of, um, if you play for Sheffield Wednesday once, then it's very likely that you play for Reading at the moment. It's uh, quite <laughs> weird. It's got Sam yeah. Hutchinson, Lucas Yao. Uh, them too, to be fair. But yeah, so it's, um, yeah, I don't think, I think they're kind of, they kind of seem like a team that would have been even better like a few years ago um, with that current squad that, you know, it, that with that squad, like two or three, probably three or four years ago, you know, they'd be, be going up. But yeah, I think um, be interested to what happens. I am, I am going down actually. So uh, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking forward to it. The only other thing I've noticed in my great prep was uh, we've got a defender called Nesta Guinness Walker, which is a football manager regen. And uh, not a real person. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. That's as far as my analysis goes. That sounds like you know in uh, films where they're like, uh, "What's your name?" and they just look at things around the room. He's like seeing a picture of <laughs> yeah, Nesta. Yeah. They, they see the lamp. <laughs> see someone. Yeah. Pump. Yeah. yeah. Nesta poster, and then like a pint of Guinness, and then someone yeah. walking past outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, poor lad. No idea if he's any good as well. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I picked Lucas Yao. I think you touched on him, Joe, but he's caused problems in the past and he's got three goals already in seven games. So, yeah, um, yeah but I don't know. Like, I've not really focused on Reddit too much given the news, but um, yeah, they're a bit of a strange team. I, I thought they'd struggle on the Port Lintz, but they've made mm-hmm. a really good start and defied quite a lot of people's expectations. But they kind of, we saw that before, didn't we? Where they, um, was it under Palnovich, where they, were top of the league and like their x their xg was like so low but they were literally scoring with every single shot they had they were like top of the league yeah uh, and then kind of faded away so we'll see um but i think um someone who will probably know better than us is uh simeon who's from the the tilehurst end um it's it's because it's viewed from the other side of course so um i caught up with him uh about the game on saturday and uh here's what he had to say we've lost to a pub side. We've literally lost to a pub side. Hi, Simeon. Thanks for uh, chatting to us. So, first question, really. What are your thoughts on running so far this season? And uh, which players have stood out? The season so far has been far better than any of us could have expected, really. Um, we came into this season thinking, oh, it's going to be a relegation fight. We're really going to struggle. And at the very least, we're going to have a slow start and maybe not pick results up until later on in the season. But results have been really good. Performance has been really good as well. And to... Uh, sit third going into the first international break is really, really encouraging. Um, it's been a lot of narrow wins when we have won. Um, besides the the Blackburn game, it's not really been a case of blowing teams away. It's been more about edging them out and being able to hold on to a lead. Um, I'd say in terms of individual players standing out, there's not really star players at the minute in the same way that there has been in years gone by, like John Swift last season, for example. It's been much more of a collective team effort everyone really buying into the same effort and um, really coming together and forming a a competent, compact um, team each week, really. Um, That said, Tom Ince is probably the um, the star man from a Reading point of view. He's really impressed with his work rate off the ball and although he's not consistent in terms of creativity in the final third, he has been able to come up with some really good goals. He scored a really good long-range strike early on against Cardiff City at home. Um, And then just before the international break, he got a really good winner with a direct through kick against Wigan Athletic. Um, Otherwise, Lucas Schwau is a player who um, we think will hopefully score a lot of goals this season. He's done that a little bit. He scored twice against Stoke, for example, and once against Blackburn. Hopefully for the rest of the season, we'll be able to give him more chances and he'll really be able to, um, to get the goals on. And if he can do that, we'll have a really good season. And, um, what are your thoughts on Paul Ince and his start as Reading manager? Paul Ince is proving people wrong and I'm really, really happy for him. Um, he came in last season and he was written off by so many people and he was written off this season as well. Um, given his lack of a record over the last decade or so, he was out of a job for eight years and look, that worried us last season um, as fans and it worried us this summer as well given that he didn't have that record of 
building teams and there wasn't really a sense of us knowing what a pool inside would look like this season if he would just be a short-term manager who managed to get that impact last season, season keep us up or if he'd be able to actually build something. Um, to his credit, he's really been able to instill this siege mentality in the team and he's really been able to um, make this side more than the sum of its parts. There aren't really too many standout individual players as we've had um, in years gone by, but he's been able to make this team compact, organised defensively and look, although we don't play really good football, we don't play expansive football as we may have done in previous years, he's still been able to build a, a culture and a structure uh, and a system that grinds out points reliably. Hopefully that will be able to continue, but at this stage I would think that he needs to um, add a bit more flair to the team, add a bit more uh, style to this team basically going forwards so that we can create more chances and score more goals because even though it has been really good for him so far, he needs to bring this team forward and he needs to constantly develop it. I don't want to be too, too critical of that um, so far given that he's done a really good job early on, but if we are going to keep up this form, we do have to evolve and, and move forwards rather than stay as we are. And finally, what's your score prediction for, for the game on Saturday? I'm pretty confident going into this game, really. Our home form has been really good, um, winning all games at home bar a Sunderland match when we were uh, we played dreadfully and we were deservedly beaten 3-0, and it could have been more, to be honest. That said, that was the last home game uh, that we've had uh, before the international break, and we're going to have to kind of banish that memory and make sure that it's a blip rather than a sign of worse home form to come. Um, further, we've got some really good attacking players hopefully coming back. Andy Carroll and Yaku Mate had um, cameo appearances before the international break. Hopefully they'll be able to play more of a part. Um, Shane Long and Ovi Ajaria hopefully will be able to come in again and if we can kind of gel that attacking quality that we do have in addition to Lucas Schwau and uh, Tom Ince that we have already, I think we're going to have enough to score a couple of goals and be able to win the game. That said, look, we're not going to score a lot of goals. I could see us winning it 2-0. Um, a relatively tight game, but um, one we're going to be able to come through without too many scares. OK, so we've heard from uh, Simeon. So, lads, um, we have no idea how Forum's going to line up for this one. Town did line up in a 4-2-3-1 formation again, in the 1-0 win against Cardiff that caused uh, Steve Morrison to lose his job. Um, that's what it's been like for town this season. If you lose to us, then you're going to get sacked. Michael O'Neill <laughs> and uh, Steve Morrison for you there. Um, so, yeah, so the lineup was uh, 4-2-3-1. So, obviously, Nichols, Turton, Lees, Helic, Nakiyama, Kasumu and Kamara in the two. Kamara had a great game. Um, and then Holmes, Tino, Rodoni and Rhodes. Um so the question is, would you, Joe, I'll come to you first. Would, would you change much for that? Um, I was thinking about it and the only thing I would change or the only areas I would change are the three behind the striker. And okay. uh, something that I think I've said to both of you when we've been watching games together or talking about it, um, putting Sauber in right midfield, he just mm -hmm. doesn't seem to have the same effectiveness cut it in. Yeah. I think he's good at sizing up a man and trying to go past him and get a ball in across or just get a ball in the box. Um, so I'd have him on the right. I'd have Rodoni centre attacking mid because okay. I just think he's great on the ball. He's he's one of those players that could pick it up, turn and find a pass, maybe more so than Andrin. Um, and I shifted Andrin out to the left wing because I think he's probably, as we saw with that goal, um, against West Brom, where he cut inside from the left and banged it in. I think he's probably more effective cutting in um, than, than Sarver is. And then, yeah, that was the only change I, changes I made. Um, other than that, I'd keep it keep it the same. Um, special mention to Helic, by the way. He looks class. He looks yeah. absolutely class. Um, nothing got past him. That was refreshing to see after the start we've, uh, we've had in defence. Oh, headed everything away in that game. And yeah, he was, it. it was great. The way he read it, he was he was across everything. Absolutely class. Hmm. Yeah, um, No, I like that, James. Would you tweak anything? I suppose, it's, like we say, we don't know how he's going to line up, but um, you know, from our perspective, do you change a winning team that much? 
you can't change a winning team. That's a Warlock quote. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think you can. I, don't, I honestly don't think you can. I would not change anything. If Particularly with like a new manager coming in, we've just come off a win from like a caretake. I would just see, because it was almost, it was kind not, it was kind of similar to like an away performance anyway, and it was quite scrappy, like mm. just sort of like, we played, don't get me wrong, we played well, but we were kind of sort of at him a bit with, with Kasumu, who I just absolutely love, and, and Kamara as well, who just, just provided a real balance in midfield that we've just been struggling with. To be honest, I mean, it probably depends on whether hockey's fit, but I, me personally, I think I'd be tempted to go for the exact same team. If not, like Joe says, maybe, maybe put um, put Thomas in. Temp, tempted to do that, or he's just played at internationals. But mm. yeah, or or even Hog. But it's just again, maybe these are just where the problems are. That that cheat. I just liked how Chico came in. He just really simplified it. He just really made it really straightforward and. You know, not trying to just fit in players just because they're like they've been big players for the club or because they played well previously. It's just sort of square pegs, sort of in square holes, um, uh, mm. or round pegs and round holes, and just, just sort of. I, I think we need to try and continue with, with that as much as possible, and and um, and then I think Fotheringham's got to see the players and, and work out his own way of playing and and how he can bring his ideas to bear on on that team and how how he can sort of even just tweak and get that extra just bit mm. extra out of players and he, he might see some of these players working better in different systems or different positions than what we've seen yet um so i think first i would i would start with that because i think it's a good good away away team um would he even be tempted to drop andrian if he can't because he's, he's just struggling for fitness but uh, and and just just bring him on last half an hour uh go for it from that angle so yeah just to give us that bit more sort of um, robustness, stability and sort of uh, hard running, which I think Andrian might struggle with under uh, bothering them, to be fair. Yeah. And it's hard to disagree with you, but I think um, I'm quite excited to see what he does, really. Um, I suppose it's because, you know, new boss, you don't know how he's going to do it. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to go with the same team. Um the only thing I'm thinking, Rhodes has been a lot better than, than Ward this season, yeah. even though. Um, but I do yeah. wonder Ward's probably going to do more kind of harrying because um, he's obviously he can get around the pitch a bit more than Rhodes can because that's not Rhodes's game. So I wonder if maybe that's good from an away perspective. Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, I think I'm probably the same though. I probably just um, yeah, I think Dwayne's going to do a lot of your running. So I think he and he played quite well. I thought against Cardiff. So. I'm probably saying with you, maybe drop Tino for this um, and put Sober in, um, you know, and kind of sh- swift it around a, a little bit. Because um, I, I um, yeah, obviously we've got the five subs, so, you know, can change it if you want. And I think you're right, James, it's about figuring out what his best team's going to be. It's going to take a couple of games. But um, I think that's quite a, quite a solid team that could, we could frustrate with Reading um, with that. So... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I think you're right. I'd stick with um, Kamara and Kasumi in the midfield. I think that's our best midfield at the moment. Um, mm. And uh, I know it's a cliche, but a new manager, there's always a player who didn't get a chance um, who might surprise everyone. So who knows? Like the we might be mm. someone great. Um, you There's know, Mahoney for me, I want to, I want to see him because uh, you know that seemed like a bit of a bit of a gamble and obviously he scored what like three goals from corners um, mm. like directly from corners in the yeah team, that's so. really weird isn't it I don't know how, yeah. how he's managed that yeah <laughs> it might just be worth bringing him on just to see if he can do it, do it well exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. And if they, like you said they've got Lumley who's a bit shaky you know yeah. like maybe that's it um, yeah no it's yeah. cool I, I think yeah I'm quite excited to see see what the lineup's going to be come 2pm uh, yeah. come on Saturday but um Joe, you said a draw for this. Uh, are you going to score yeah. a draw, or do, you, or do you think no, no? Uh, one one. I went. Um, Lovely. I didn't 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 pick a score though. Well, you can do it right now. Uh, Lord Ward. Lord Ward. Lord Ward. Lord, Lord, Lord Ward. Ward. Yeah. Lovely. Lordy Wardy. Lovely. <laughs> nice. Um. 
Cool, James. You're going two, there. So. Two one, two one. Hey. Uh, Rhodes and uh, planned this before. Rhodes and uh, uh, like Sorber. I think he'll win the town fans back. Yeah, I think he'll win the back round. I'd like to see that anyway. I'd yeah, like it needs that. to happen. And I think Nabi's going to score against us. I think Nabi's going to score against us 100%. <laughs> Nabi, Nabi on Tom Ince. He's no going to have else. a fucking blinder, you know, that's a <laughs> <laughs> Anything past him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he is. Nabi, we love you and you're remembered very fondly at town. But, um, Absolutely, yeah. You did Absolutely. have some stinkers for us as well, so you can have a stinker on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'd have a, I'd have a stinker if I was playing Richard Kier. Um Anyway, Brady's <laughs> going for it. I'm going for it now. It's a great lad. No, um, five points. <laughs> yeah, I also went for one-one, Joe. I I think Redoni's going to get his first for the club because I think he keeps ah, coming close. So. Yeah, I'd like that. I'd really mm. like that. Yeah, he's um, well player of the month. So. Yeah. There you go. Got good in the training things, videos yeah. I've watched. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Right. Okay. So we're all we're all uh, saying we're going to avoid defeat here, which I think would be a very good start to the following yes. rain. So here's hope it comes true. Um. Yeah. So we've had quite a bit of a long pod, but before we go, there's always time for a hero when you need them. Yeah. That means it's time for the amazing elbow. Um. I think the fans could probably see I was trying my best. The amazing elbow. As a centre forward, you know, the last thing he wants is a goal drought and starting off at a club. Started on my own up front, and the really good centre forwards like Jordan were rested. Okay, so cast your mind back, dear listener. Um, it was quite a while ago. We've since had two disappointing England performances since uh, the amazing elbow was last out in. So um, to remind you what happened um, would be a really good question because I've kind of forgotten myself. However, there was, um, he was leaving the kit man's office and he went to the pitch and discovered, because he was fighting an army of dinner ladies. Um, and you guys voted in your droves, uh, your millions, as Tom said, your millions of people. It was quite the hot debate. Um, that it was the return of David Wagner. So I can read you what happened. So... You might remember Matt's uh, amazing little speech. Uh, I think it's coming back to you. But anyway, as he makes it out onto the pitch, the dinner ladies multiply and all look lost for the amazing elbow. But from the east is um, Michael Heffaly, who blows his magic conch and summons David Wagner's Barmy Army. And as a war breaks out, it is then interrupted by dot, dot, dot. Um, yeah, so <laughs> to sum up, uh, the picture I'm looking at is Wagner on an army of horses fighting dinner ladies on the pitch and Michael Heffley is in the background on a giraffe blowing a seashell. Um, so <laughs> this war is about to break out, but it's interrupted by dot, dot, dot. So we're going to give you three options here um, and you're going to vote for the winner. So, um, lads, I forgot to do an option for this, so I'm going to go last and think of one hastily. <laughs> okay. Who wants to go first? Do you want to take the floor, James? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, yeah, after all that, um, <laughs> I can't remember it all myself, but um, <laughs> so then they look to the skies and it's Christoph Buhler flying over to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine Tom drawing that with his little face sticking out on airplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. I went for it's interrupted as a telling moment in the battle when uh, a turkey twizzler goes flying through the air and lodges in the throat of the <laughs> dinner ladies' leader, Samantha Allardyce. <laughs> um, I think something something similar to, to King Harold getting an arrow in his eye at the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> something similar to that. <laughs> Turkey Twizzler. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Yeah. Right. Grim tidings, my lord. Our general is dead. <laughs> How did she die? <laughs> Death by Twizzler. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Okay, uh, my option is um, the war breaks out, but it's interrupted by um, <laughs> the dizzy penalties competition that's going on at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they brought that back, by the way. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I need to bring it. I, um, I think he's one of these where I think I'd be better at it than I actually was. I think that's the, yeah. I think that's the Dutch courage at halftime for me yeah. that's uh, tempting me. Um, I think I'd do worse than Stephen Chicken. Sorry, Steve, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so our three options are, I'll read it one more time and give you our options. So um, as he makes his way out onto the pitch, the dinner lady multiply and all look lost for the amazing elbow. But from the east is Michael Heffler who blows his magic conch and summons the David Wagner Barmy army. As a war breaks out, it is then interrupted by Eva Bueller's fly, flying over, um, a turkey twizzler getting lodged in uh, <laughs> Samantha Allardyce's throat. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, they get distracted by the dizzy penalties. So, um, good luck to me who has to fit these all into 25 characters on the Twitter poll. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but Tom, hope we did your section justice. Um, Tom will hopefully be back next week with myself. Um, but that's I think that's I think that wraps us up rather nicely, gents. So um thank you to James and Joe for coming on. Thank you to the listeners as always for tuning in. Um and thanks to Magic Rock who sponsored this episode. Don't forget, if you fancy a beer, who doesn't fancy a beer? Um one of magic rock beers obviously the tap room is great you can get 10 percent off orders if you go online with our code ahttc10 so be sure to use that and you can save a little bit of money on some life beverageinos as the the kids would say so uh, i'm going to stop talking ta-ta for now and up the town so town play up bring the car Back to order